Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So some of you have reached out to me in the past couple weeks or so asking me to make more SQL videos, specifically uh, walkthroughs of SQL interview questions. So your wish is my command. And here it is. By the way, if you watched my past video about how I learned SQL from scratch in 11 days to pass my FANG data science interview, you would know that I have an obsession with my whiteboard. I prefer to do everything on my whiteboard. However, you guys did make a really good point because interviews are gonna be virtual now. So they're probably gonna also, um, that final whiteboarding round is gonna be virtual as well. And they're gonna use something called CoderPad usually, which is just like a text editor, uh, similar to Sublime Text. So I'm gonna just show you guys using Sublime because I think CoderPad is paid um, and it's pretty, pretty much the same thing anyway. All right, so let's get started. The question that we're gonna be looking at today is a SQL interview question asked by a tech company. The question is, write a SQL query to count the number of unique users per day who logged in from both iPhone and web, where iPhone logs and web logs are in distinct relations. So this question doesn't tell us um, what the iPhone logs and web logs actually looks like. So we're gonna to have to make some assumptions here. All right, so let's see. For iPhone logs, let's call that iPhone. Um, I'm gonna assume that it's gonna be timestamps called TS, user ID and iPhone session ID. And similarly for web log, it's gonna be timestamp, user ID and web session ID. Okay, so I'm gonna just assume that this is what our relations are gonna be looking like. And now I'm gonna write down each step of how to tackle this query. So the first step is going to be join. So we want to join together the iPhone and the web tables. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna be matching by day and user ID. And finally, we're gonna be grouping by the day and we want to count the number of users per day. So our final table is probably gonna look something like uh, day num users. All right, so we now know what it is that we want it to look like. All right, so time to write the query. From iPhone I, join web W, and we're gonna be joining on here, match by day and user ID. So i.userID is equal to w.userID and so we're gonna be joining by the day, but timestamp, our assumption is that um, it actually includes both the day and that time associated with that. But since we only care about the date and we don't actually care about the granularity of the hours or the minutes or the seconds, so we can actually truncate that. So the function here is date trunk, uh, day and i dot user, oops, not user ID, i dot ts is equal to date trunk day w.ts. So that should match by day. All right, so our third step here is to group by the day and count the number of users. Okay, so let's write the select statement first. We want the day over here, so we're gonna do date trunk again. Day i.ts as day. And then we're gonna count the number of users. So count, so number of users we want are unique. So we wanna count distinct, oops. Uh, I dot user ID as num users. And um, I just wanted to make a point here in saying that we used an inner join because we didn't specify what kind of join that we're using. So that should only join together users that were logged in from both iPhone and web. All right, so we need to write the group by clause. So group by one. All right, 
Let us look this over one more time. Mm -hmm. Select date trunk, okay. So that should give us the day and it should give us the count as the number of users. iPhone I, web here, joining is correct. Okay. So that looks correct to me. And now I'm gonna think about if there's any ways of making it more optimized. Okay. So I think that this is pretty much as optimal that you can get. Um, like we need the distinct here in case like people log in on their iPhone and web multiple times throughout the day. We only count, want to count the number of users that are there. So we do need that. Um, and in terms of date trunk, I mean, there could be a function that's more um, efficient than that, but I think this is fine. Okay, yeah, this looks good to me. So our final step now is to actually test out this query and see if we made any mistakes. Before we get into that, I just wanted to say that if you're enjoying this video and finding it useful, consider liking the video and even subscribing to the channel. Um, I'm planning to make more videos like these depending on you know how much you guys like them. Um, but yeah, like that's your interactions with me and your engagements is how I gauge how useful you guys are finding my material. And it really motivates me to make more videos like these. All right. So this is SQL Fiddle and I just copy pasted some dummy data that I made previously, uh, just like for the sake of time, you guys don't have to watch me trying to come up with data to put in. Um, but I'll still go over it with you guys though. So I created two tables, one called web, one called iPhone, which is exactly the uh, tables that we assumed that we were having when we were writing the query. So it has timestamp, user ID, web session ID, and for iPhone it has timestamp, user ID, and iPhone session ID. And I also just inserted some values in to test out our query with. So here we have in web um, now, so like timestamp is gonna be currently, user ID is one and session ID is 100. And then this is a, from one hour ago, it's still the same user and session is 101. And then I did another one that was from one day ago, user ID is two, so a separate person and the session ID is 103. For iPhone, I did something similar. So our same user here, user number one, and then from two hours ago, user number one again. I did user one and I did duplicates of this just to make sure that we actually have unique number of users. Um, sorry, we have, just to make sure that we have unique users because we don't want duplicates to show up. Um, and then we have from one day ago, but this one is different. The user ID is three. So after we run our query, the return should be we only have one row for today and we should have number of users is going to be one because the only one that should match is user id number one and only one of them all right so let us copy paste our actual query oops that is not our query this is our query so this is the query that we just wrote um hopefully it works Fingers crossed. <gasps> no, so many errors. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, okay. So this is my SQL server. So I actually wrote this in Postgres SQL. So let's change that and try again. Yay, it worked. Success. All right, so this is what we expected. Um, we have today, uh, which is September 2nd, and the number of users is one. So depending on how paranoid I am and just kind of like how confident I am in my query, sometimes I would add in more dummy data to see if I can like catch any edge cases that my query doesn't, wouldn't be able to um, process. But in this case, I'm pretty confident that this query will work in all edge cases. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave it as that. So that was the final step. And I just wanted to stress that it's really important to actually test out your queries because oftentimes, you know, you think that's correct, but maybe there's like small syntax error, which is I, things that you didn't catch previously. And this feedback is really important for you actually learning. So next time when something like that comes up again, you wouldn't make the same mistake twice. And that's it for this question. This is what I did for all the SQL questions that I practiced when I was prepping for my own interview at the Fang company. And, um, 
yeah, let me know what you guys think about this video. I've never done like live coding like this before. Um, so, you know, let me know if it's like too slow, too fast and being like really confusing. You know, maybe I'm like repeating myself repeatedly, <laughs> something like that, right? Um, and if you guys enjoy this video, also let me know if you want me to do more like this. Um, maybe it's helpful to see me just like go through more interview questions. Maybe not, just let me know <laughs> so I know like, what kind of videos to make in the future as well. All right, so thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.